Hey guys, thank you so much for joining me on this new episode. I'm really excited to talk about this. I know a few weeks ago, if you guys haven't already listened to my previous episodes, um, I was talking about 13 things mentally successful people do not do. Now, I want to kind of embark a little bit more on the beliefs behind what it takes to be successful in your business. I believe that there are about five different beliefs or something that I've actually just come up with for myself in order to hold that successful mindset. And with that, I know that in previous podcasts, I've also spoken about you get to believe whatever you want to believe, that beliefs are just opinions, they are not facts, they are not truths, and you can change them at any time. Now, I have other podcast episodes for that. I would check that out if you if you do wish to dive in a bit deeper about how your mindset has everything to do with your success. But this will kind of break it down in today's episode. This will break it down into five categories, I'd like to say, um, as to what kind of beliefs you should be at least aware of in order to create the life, happiness, success in your business, in your life, all the good stuff all around you. And so I came up with these five because I had been asked a question about if I could extract certain beliefs that could grow my business effectively, what would those beliefs be? And with that, it was really hard to come up with an answer to that. I actually I actually listened to a lot of podcasts in as far as success business mindset because I know that we all have different beliefs about ourselves and different beliefs about beliefs and all these things. And I was wondering like how I could break this down in a way that would be instructive and also hit home. You feel like that epiphany moments, that aha moment where you're like, wow, if only I could do that, then I could be there. I could be a success in this and, you know, different businesses, different types. I know that my listeners are all different walks of life, not just tattoo artists, but I definitely cater more towards the creative business side of things just because that is my forte, that is my expertise, and that's what I love doing. And that's these are the people I like to help because as a tattoo artist myself, I've gone through the ups and downs of beliefs and of mental nonsense, if you will, because of the fact that you know I had certain beliefs about myself that I just considered law and considered truth and those those particular beliefs were holding me back from you know essentially being the person that I want to be and getting the things that I want to get to and so when you have these five types of beliefs or categories of beliefs you will be able to reach more people you will have bigger impact and if that is something that you want in your business you want to create more art so you can create bigger impact you want more clientele you want to reach more people via social media You don't want to have to pay for advertisement. You want your ideal customer to come to you. You want, you know, to be booked out weeks in advance, to charge the money you want to charge and and to get paid for what you're worth. These, all these things are easier said than done, but the way to get there is by your mindset, is the beliefs that you put inside of your head to achieve that success that you believe is success for yourself. So Let's go ahead and get right into it. So the first thing would be, the first category of it would be your beliefs about beliefs. Now, neuroscience tells us that our brains doesn't match your beliefs to fit into our lives, but actually matching our life to fit our pre-existing beliefs. What you experience in life is a byproduct of what you believe. Now, I hope that makes sense. So, so what I'm saying is, is that what everything that you're looking at, everything, every thing that you're aware of is because of a pre-existing belief that is already habit with inside of you. So for instance, like your business, how you see your business will determine what's possible for you. And that's a huge thing. Because if you don't see the possibility in your business or you don't see the certain things that you can achieve or want to achieve or whatever, then obviously you're not going to get what you want. You're not going to get to the places of success of what your success looks like you're going to be or going to be or going to get to that point. The reason why I say that the first one should be your beliefs about beliefs because we tend to believe that our beliefs are law. 
And we tend to believe that it is what it is. When it doesn't necessarily have to be that way. Belief is a perceived truth. It's a habit that you continue just to believe. So if you want to change that belief, you can. You have all that power to change that belief. You don't have to believe that everything that is going on inside of you is law. If you don't like it, change it. I think a lot of times when people say that they're stuck, they feel like they're not growing, especially in their business, or even when you look at, you know, analytics, or you're looking at your social media numbers, or your followers, or your comments, or your engagement going up and down, and things like that, we all have this belief that it's something having to do with us, or it's something that we're not doing, or we just give up on it because we're like, well, I don't know how to. All we need to realize is that it's just a perspective, and that these perspectives can be changed. So when my focus, for instance, when my focus was solely on um, what what I would say would be solely on like the numbers or analytics of social media. When I was so obsessed but having no direction and so obsessed with numbers and realizing, oh, well, this fastest, easiest, whatever way is because I'm a hot chick and I need to post about hot chick things and I just want to post about me being half naked all the time because then that'll grow my following. Yeah, that totally can help with the analytics of it all. But I've put it into my brain that I am only a hot chick and that's the only way I can grow a following. When obviously over the past few years, if you guys have been following me for a very long time, especially on Instagram, you will notice that the hot chick thing is a part of who I am, but it isn't who I am. And I've had to change that belief because in my head, it was just law. Hot girls equals more followers. Okay. And then to some, they believe that same thing. Like men, I get this all the time, you know, from my students and from people that follow me trying to grow their business using Instagram, especially tattoo artists. They're like, well, I'm not a hot chick. And I'm like, that's not what you need to be. And the thing in order for me to even say that was because I had to change my own beliefs on what I needed to be or what I needed to show up as in order to get to the places that I wanted to get to be respected in the way that I wanted to be respected. And I'm not saying there's any wrong, anything wrong with getting half naked and showing it off. Baby girl, baby boy, you do you. I love that shit. You want to show it off? Please do. But that's on that. That's totally up to you. The belief behind it is, is that you have to be this or you have to be that in order to grow the following. And that's what I was believing. I believed that was law. I saw, I saw it happening. I believe that that was the only way. It was like believing, you know, it's like believing that the sky is blue. Hey, but Reese, the sky is blue. Well, no, that is also just a belief because the sky isn't blue when it's nighttime. The sky isn't blue when it's gloomy or overcast when it's raining. It's definitely not blue right now. It's June gloom right now here in Cali. So I believe what, and this is also, again, a belief that, uh, that truth means it is something 100% of the time, all the time. So... That's where I find the most power in it because when I believe what my when I changed my beliefs about beliefs, I realized that what my thought processes were about the habits that I have about myself, what I do on a daily basis, all these things make me this person on who I am when in actuality it doesn't. I can change any of those things. I don't have to be one thing to define me. And if I don't like that one thing anymore, let's say it got me, let's say that belief got me from there back there to here, but it won't get me from right where I'm at to there, to the future, to that projected person that I am striving to be, then I need to change something of the beliefs about what I believe. So when you guys can be open-minded about realizing that beliefs are just an opinion and and it's just a perspective, then you start to open up the floodgates of like, wow, what is it that I believe that's just law to me? What is it that I believe that I believe every day, no questions asked that is just in my subconscious as of now because it's a habit? What can I get aware of to change in order to pivot, change, grow my business effectively? So that's the first thing. The second thing would be Beliefs about what is possible. Now that you've already accepted that beliefs are just an opinion, beliefs aren't truth, it's not 100% law truth, all right, 
Well, now we can open up to what we actually believe. So what's the belief behind what's possible? Really, what's the belief behind what's possible for you? Because we see all these people doing all these other things and we're like, that's great for them, but that ain't great. That's not going to happen for me. Now, if you have that intention, of course, it's not going to happen for you. It's not going to, it's not going to be a thing. So actually, what I would suggest is I would maybe take a pause, take, get a journal out, write this down. What beliefs, or what, what do you believe is possible for you? Ask yourself that question. Because we all have desires. We are desire-driven creatures. You know, we're, we're, we're human. We, we are driven by desire, by wants and needs. And I don't think that anything is bad with having wants or needs. To be honest with you, I think it's wonderful to have goals, to have wants, to realize like what you do want. Because without the opposition of getting through something and not getting it, and that dichotomy of what we don't want creates what we do want. So we understand what we do want, and I love that. But I think the only thing that we, we get a little in trouble with is when we ask ourselves... What, what are the possibilities for us? We actually ask ourselves what's realistic for us. And that's where you stunt your growth. I think being realistic is just literally tying a string around a poor bird's little foot, letting it fly, and then dragging it back down because you're like, oh, you're not going to go that far up. But it's like, bro, that bird can fly wherever it wants, but you have a string tied to it. That's like exactly what you're doing to yourself when you ask yourself well, what's realistic and I understand everybody wants to be you know they just want to make sure that they stick into their comfort zone because that's all realistic really means what is it gonna hurt Th to think of the dream the unimaginable or so you like to think what is it gonna harm anything does it give you anxiety a little bit when you think about the major part of the dreams that you have within yourself that you're just like yeah, but there, yeah, there's no way. There's no way that's going to happen, right? Like, what, what causes you to stop right there in your tracks? Not even to write it down. So I think the reason why people have the issue with dreaming big is because it's uncomfortable. Because trust me, even when I think of the crazy, hairy, scary goals that I have within my businesses, especially, you know, this newest one that I just launched, my online course for tattoo artists, helping them grow visibility on Instagram, how to utilize social media to grow your clientele, make more money. That was such a out of nowhere thing. I have the strategies. I already know what I'm doing. But to tell people here, let me teach this to you. That was a little scary for me. It gave me a little start. And by saying it out loud, it almost put it into, you know, the universe telling them that, like, this is what I want. But now I'm afraid because the reason why it scares you and it's uncomfortable is because you already know that by putting it out there, you are going to have to be and believe in different things in order to get there because being in your comfort zone and being inside your box and your bubble is not growth. You stay stagnant. But when you get go head on into something you believe that's a possibility and something that you believe is possibility for you in your business or in your life, it gets uncomfortable and people don't want to say it out loud because they're, they're afraid they're going to have to follow through with it, which is, it can be scary and I can understand why people don't want to do it. But at the end of the day, it's like, what are, do you have to lose? Really? What is it that you have to lose? I like to think that anything is possible 100% of the time. And whatever it is that you want will require something of you that will challenge you, that will be uncomfortable and hard. But if you already believe it's not possible, then it's not possible. If that is your belief, then it's not going to happen. Of course not. Why would it? You're already put it into your mindset. You're already acting on that belief. What you believe, you perceive. What you perceive is your intent. And your intent will come, you know? Self-fulfilling prophecy, essentially. Self-fulfilling prophecy. You've already, you don't believe you can do it. So that is the way you live your life, the way you project your energy, the way that your behavior reacts to. And then there you are in the same old spot. You know, what I love too is, so I'm, I'm really kind of, I don't really know much about quantum physics, I'll say that, but I will say that I have an affinity for it. I really love studying on it. I just, I'm not a scientist or anything like that, 
But quantum physics talks about infinite realities and infinite probabilities that exist simultaneously with us here. So you are just the sum of choices and decisions that you make at every moment. And then you can make a decision and boom, it sets off a whole nother trajectory of all the things that are going to happen. But what if you make a different decision and set you in a completely different collapsed probability of existence? Now, I know that might be hard to understand. So it's basically a thought form can't exist for you without simultaneously already creating that as a probability of existence. Basically, Whatever you think is possible, it is. Isn't that fucking crazy? That's science. That's what quantum physics believes. That if you're already perceiving the possibility of it, that it's already there. That it's simultaneously creating that possibility into existence. How do you think all these inventors come up with these things? They just think it. They believe in the possibility. And of course, trial and error, trial and error, millions, millions of dollars, years and whatever nonsense. It doesn't matter how long it takes, but they believe it so much that they believe it. And the possibility is already creating itself into existence. That is what quantum physics says. It's crazy. So you can't think it without it actually being probable. See? Isn't that crazy? It's crazy. The only thing that is impossible are the things you're not thinking about. If someone was really truly believed that they could grow wings or something like that, then it's gonna fucking happen. Do I personally believe that? Eh, no, then it probably won't happen for me even if I gave it a half ass shot. You know, if I don't really truly believe that my success is inevitable, then it's not going to be for me. If I don't truly believe that what I'm doing is working, what I'm doing is creating impact for people, what, I'm, what my art does for people, if I don't truly believe in that, I don't truly believe in, in how my, my success and my creativity is going to evolve every single day, then it's not going to happen. I'm going to stay in my box. I'm going to stay stagnant. And that's okay. If that's where you want to be, that's totally okay. But if there's something, if there's, a, there's like a feeling niggling at you, inside of you, keep poking at you saying there's more to life than just this. There's more to life than just this. If you hear that voice inside your head, that's because there is. And that's because you want to dream up the possibilities of what you can create in your success, in your life, in your business. You're just choosing not to write it out because you are afraid of it. Now, who cares about what you write it down? Don't make it mean anything. Just write it down. What do you believe is possible for you? Not what is realistic, what is possible for you? So you just got to realize that success comes from within. How much, it's like how much time are you spending on doing anything because you don't feel like it's actually possible? That's the problem. So you have to believe what is possible for you. So the first thing is your beliefs about beliefs. The second thing is what you believe is possible. And now we'll move on to the third thing is like, what are the beliefs of what it's going to take? So now you have your possibility, but now... You have the, oh, well, it's going to take all this money. It's going to take time away from my family. It's going to take this. It's going to take that. It's going to, and we tend to go down that negative route. We believe what it will take to hit our goals and our dreams are going to cause us to, you know, it'll stifle us from going for it. Yeah, well, it's possible because I've seen this person do it, but I can't do it because I have all these other things that they don't have, like a family, I don't have a car, I don't have my own shop, I don't know how to draw, I've never been to, I've never been to college for arts, for art, things like that. So w- these are all those complaints, I hear excuses, if you will, as to why you think you can't get to that possibility. But why don't you ask yourself a better question? How can I make it possible? What would it need to, what would it look like if it was possible, what would it what would it need to look like if it was possible? Because anything is possible. Anything is possible. And this kind of goes into the category of like failure. But again, failure, I hate to say this to you guys, but failure is just an interpretation. There's no such thing as failure. Trust me, I have to tell myself this all the time. I'm like, there's no such thing as failure. I just feel like I fucking failed, right? No, okay? So there is no failure. So basically, failure is a label that we give unwanted circumstances or events. Something that happened, we did something, and we label it as failure. But really, 
that's just fucking called life. We go through a circumstance that we didn't necessarily want or we didn't necessarily feel like we needed and we can label that as a failure. Now, every time you put yourself out there, every time you put yourself on the line, you are either going to get what you want or you are going to get what you need. And when you think of that, when you think of going for it like that, then fuck, there is no failure. There is no mistake. There is no, you know, regret. Anything that you think about in your past, anything is just a reference to show you, hey, this didn't work in that part of my business. Let me try this instead. And you do it over and over and over again. Because life is going to give you either what you want, which is, hey, I hit that goal. I hit that. I, I, I'm booked out three months in advance. I made that 50K thousand followers that I really wanted. Or you're going to get what you need, which is the lesson that you needed to learn in order to become the person to actually get what you want. Because I'll tell you right now that if I can look back seriously, like asking myself this question, I look back from right now from where I'm at, where I'm sitting right now and all the things that I've been through and think about those times, really, really get aware of those times where I'm like, I failed. I'm never going to make it. This, this and that, blah, blah, blah. I come here and I'm like, wow, I did it. Even through all of that failure, all of that crazy mind games I was putting myself through, all that self-doubt, I kept trudging through and here I am. The quote-unquote of success to me at the time. Now I have a new level of what success means to me. It's a different belief because I've changed that because I believe that beliefs can be changed. They're just perspective. And now I have a different goal. My goal isn't necessarily about, hey, hey, can I hit 100K thousand followers on Instagram? No, my goal is, hey, how many people can I attract into my tribe to create an impact? How many people can I influence in a positive way to go after their goals and dreams? But here, let me give you some strategies in order to get there. Those are my goals now. That is the goal now. Do, if I reach it, Cool. If I don't, at learning something along the way. I'm learning something about myself every single day. And if you look at life like that, you can learn about, whoa, the possibilities in your life. And my beliefs on what, it was, what it's going to take, it changes. I used to think, oh, well, as long as I only look good, again, going back to the whole modeling being a hot girl thing, as long as I look good, so I work out all the time, I do all these things, I basically hurt I'll run myself into the ground to look a certain way because this is the, what I believe is beauty and then I can grow my following or whatever. Now, the possibilities behind that, it's like, no. Let me change that belief. Let me change this belief. Let me change the belief on what it's going to take to even get there. Do I don't have to go the, the route that I believed I needed to go. Now I'm going to try this route even though it's a little scarier, even though it's not something I've done before, even though it's outside of my comfort zone. You would think that being outside my comfort zone would be not to take my clothes off. But now it's like, no, leave your clothes on, goddammit. <laughs> Talk about. So let's pivot. So that was the thing. I was like, wow, let me, what is it going to take for me to do this? What is it going to, who am I need, going to need to be to create this impact? Well, I needed to change that. I needed to change what it was going to take. And I needed to change my idea of failure. Because when I didn't reach that goal, why I'm going to be so down on myself and give up? No. I'm going to learn from it, take what I can from it, and move forward. Try something different or try it again and do that differently. That's the way, that's the way we should think of the quote-unquote failure. If you are arguing with you, yourself, saying, oh, but I just don't want to make a mistake. I just don't want to fail. You already did because the fact that you're holding yourself back by believing that you aren't going to make a mistake or you aren't going to quote unquote fail, you're already making a mistake. You guys, success is the worst teacher, as some people say. Success is the worst teacher because you, you succeed. You're like, cool, that's done. Been there, done that. But when you 
make a mistake or you fail or it doesn't actually reach your goal, you learn something from it. You grow from that. You become stronger, more resilient, more confident. Yeah, we got to go. We, you know, life isn't going to take us straight. We're not going to go A to B in a straight line, you guys. We're going to take a roller coaster ride, go upside down a few times, maybe lose our shit, like throw up. And then we're going to get there and be like, whoa, I fucking did it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's, that's the way life works. So if you're afraid of failing, you might as well just sit in a corner and not do anything and just sit with your wants and desires and be upset because you're never going to go for them. How boring would that be? Learn to love the uncomfortable, you guys. That's what it's going to take. Another thing to basically create more of a, a successful, effective mindset for your business is to, it's the beliefs about what you think is going to happen. We all go through this. We always predict, well, this is going to happen. So if I say this, she's going to get mad. Or if I do this, are they not, I'm not going to get enough likes. Or if I post this, am I going to get laughed at? Is someone going to say something? Is my family going to talk about it? If I get this tattoo, if I do this, if I do that, if, woulda, coulda, shoulda. And a lot of times we don't predict anything in the good. We always predict something negative. And so when you start to predict, you're literally just creating a belief within yourself. And if you do this, this is exactly what's going to happen. And you know, what's so funny is this shit scares the shit out of me because sometimes when I think negative thoughts, I'm like, no, I didn't, I'm not putting it out there. I'm not putting it out there into the fucking universe. Please don't. But you know, like my, I have to, I have to really, really put it upon myself that I just set the goal, realize the possibilities of that goal, realize who I need to be in order to get to that goal, and then let it go. I don't want to predict the future. I don't want to predict what's going to happen. Now, if I'm, if I'm doing you know, a projection of my life and things like that and basically forward focusing and believing in all the dreams and what I see as a possibility. That's wonderful. Put that intention out there. Positive intention out there outweighs. But it's like anything. If you think about only negative things, of course it's only going to happen because your focus is there. You focus on what you're going to get. You know, when you're late to work, you're like, oh, I don't want to be late. I don't want to be late. All of a sudden, every single red light hits you and you only notice every single red light. You don't notice the puppy over here smiling at you from the window because you're so focused on the negativity that you lose track. You're so tunnel visioned. So when you focus on the more positive aspects of what outcomes could happen or just let it go, because focusing on the future takes you out of the moment, period, and we're not living where we need to be living right here. Forward focusing is only great for goals and achievements that you want to achieve, but we don't need to put weight onto something like that. We don't need to we don't need to have an expectation on how that goal should come to us. We don't need an expectation on how we reach that goal or when we reach that goal. Those are the projections that everybody feels so upset with themselves when they make the goal and then they get to that point and then they don't reach it. They make it mean something. You don't have to make it mean something. And I learned that the hard way twice this year. First time I ever did my launch, I was like, oh, this is a no brainer. Everybody's going to love this thing. Didn't exactly go exactly as I planned. And I definitely learned a lot from that experience. And then my second launch came and actually did not as good as the last one, actually as the first one. But the way I handled it was 10 times better. And that was success to me at that point. Because I went into it with a healthy mindset saying the possibilities are endless. No matter fucking what, I'm winning. Even though on the money scale or on what the goal was didn't actually get met, the people that I'm intending to help that want help from me are getting it. And they're loving it. And that's all I fucking care about. Because I don't know. I realize, oh, it's not about the money. It's not about how many people. It's not about reaching the goal. It's about the steps that I took to get there and what I learned along the way and what I learned from it. So obviously, I still have things I need to learn and I soon will get what I want because I'm not going to stop. So that is what you have to do is you have to realize that you can't be projecting a prediction of the future because a prediction, again, is just a belief. 
And if you're going to believe all the negativity, the woulda, coulda, shoulda is about it. However, when most of us are predicting about the negative, like I said, it's it's you are creating that behavior, you're creating that intention, and whatever we in, we whatever we do that c- continuously goes around in our brains that this is exactly what's going to happen if we do this, and it could potentially stop us from doing that thing because we believe so much that that's the that's the reaction, that's the that's the circumstance that's going to happen when we actually have zero clue of what's going to happen. We just need to go for it. But then our behavior and the way we go about it, instead of taking leaps and bounds, we're taking baby little steps because we're too scared to get too close to the ledge because we're like, oh, well, if I get close to the ledge, I'm going to fall off. That's, that's just point blank. So you believe that that's your future, so you don't want to get close to that ledge, but you know you got to get close in order to you know reach some goal you're trying to reach. You're trying to fear of heights or whatever. And... You take baby steps instead of just being like, well, I don't know what's going to happen if I take a leap. Let's just fucking do it. Eyes closed and the net will appear, right? Have you guys heard that? It's like take the leap of faith and the net will appear. It's not that you get to see the net already appear because then that's not gross. That's being somewhere you've already been. That's like saying, well, if I put this cookie in my mouth, I know it's going to taste good. You know, you already have that belief it's going to taste good. When it tastes bad, you're like, what the hell? You know what I mean? But you already believe it's going to taste good, so you're so excited, so you slowly eat it and you eat it yummily. That's, that's already knowing, because you had so many cookies before, you're like, oh, this is just going to be the same old yummy cookie. This is going to be the same old thing, the same old thing I've been doing, I know it works. That's, that's knowing that the net's already there. But when you have the belief and you don't see the net and you just take that leap of faith, that is something entirely different, and that is growth. And the last thing you're going to want to do about your beliefs is what you believe about yourself. You want to go over these beliefs about yourself because it is such a huge thing. And the reason why I make it the last one is because understanding beliefs about beliefs, knowing that they can be changed at any moment, any moment you can change your beliefs about anything you want to, about your life, about your past, about your future, about whatever. You can change your perspective. Belief is just a perspective. You could change that. Then you start to change the beliefs about what's possible for you. You start to believe what's possible. What do you believe is possible for you? Then you go into the beliefs about what it's going to take to get to that possibility, to that new truth that you just come up with, to that new belief that you have inside of you. And you take away the predictions and the projections of woulda, coulda, shoulda, what's going to happen in the future because that is a waste of time. Worry is a waste of time. Worry is just a buffering emotion that we use and label just like failure as a way to protect ourselves from actually thinking a different thought. I know. Did I just blow your mind? I know. It's crazy, babes. Okay. So when now we get all the way down to beliefs about you, because it all sums it up at the end of the day, what do you believe about you? You are so many things. You are not just a tattoo artist. I am not just a tattoo artist. I am an entrepreneur. I am a woman. I'm beautiful. I am successful. All these words or descriptions after the I am sentence is what you believe who you are. So when you ask yourself, who am I? And all the things you say, you could say, I am shy. I am lonely. I'm not successful. I'm not good enough. I can't read well. I'm, I'm, I'm not creative. Those are beliefs that can be changed about you. But when you realize what beliefs you had inside of yourself, so I would suggest writing this down. I would suggest pausing this and answering all these questions and really truly taking the time to answer them, either writing them down, typing them out, saying it out loud. When you think of all of these I am's and all of these words and sayings after that I am, you tend to realize who you are, what you believe you are. Because at the end of the day, you are the creator of I am. I am slow. I am creative. I am not creative. I'm successful. I I don't have time. I... I'm not like her, comparison, la la la. Whatever you believe about I am, you are the creator of I am. However you finish that sentence is who you end up creating yourself to be. And that is who you become. 
And since, let's go back to quantum physics and neuroscience, tells us that our brain doesn't match your beliefs to fit your life, it fits your life that matches your pre-existing beliefs. We decide who we are. We decide we are this. And that is what creates our life. So if I decide that I'm not successful, I decide that I'm not creative, I decide that I'm not a good tattooist, I decide all of these things that are an opinion and are not true, and most people would tell me that that's just an opinion, but let's flip that around. Is there anything that people have said about you where you're like, they're like, whoa, dude, don't say that. That's why I, when I catch someone, even myself saying, oh, that was dumb, I'm dumb. Uh, no, don't say that around me, shit. I don't like that. <laughs> don't say that because even though it might be a joke and it might be a self deprecating joke, something that you do in order to, you know, hide your embarrassment or whatever, you actually, there's a deep down seated rooted thing there that you actually maybe believe that. And maybe you should dig into the reasons as to why you think that, why you believe that, and then write those things down and figure it out because we need to change that because you are not dumb. You're a capable, smart human being. You are creative. You're fucking awesome. You're creating impact. You want to create impact. You wouldn't be watching this podcast if you didn't. You wouldn't be listening to this podcast if you didn't. So it's just one of those things. What do you believe about yourself? What, who are you? I am, finish the sentence. So change the sentence if you don't like it. Change it to something you do like and remember it and believe it. Believe it hard. I always think of these things as like a powerful affirmation. I know a lot of affirm affirmations don't work for some people because they say things and they don't believe they don't believe it. They don't have intention behind it. They don't have energy behind it. But if you could start with baby steps like, hey, instead of saying, I suck at tattoos, how about we go about it? It's like, how can I get better at tattoos? I'm, I, I'm working on getting better at creating. I am working because these things doesn't, it doesn't have to be like, I'm a badass tattooer. If you don't feel that way, you can't believe that shit. Don't, you know, you're not going to believe it. But if I'm working towards to being a badass tattooer, now that's something I can get behind. That's something I can believe. I'd be like, all right, you know, don't get me wrong. I know I'm a very talented tattoo artist, but I have some major, major creative goals and creative juices I want to be flowing in order for me to reach a new heightened level of creativity. But there are times where I've, I've even heard myself saying, oh, I'm all right. I'm an all right tattoo artist. But being modest is not, it doesn't help with my confidence. It just creates more doubt and then almost a more of a need to get someone to tell me that I'm not because that also is self-doubt as well. So that's an insecurity that we all need to get over. And I have that all the time. So I suggest just change it. Be like, I'm working towards becoming a badass tattooer in my eyes for me. And that is something I can believe if someone were to tell it to me and be like, all right, good for you. That's fucking awesome. Because then you see the possibility in your success. You see the, you see the possibility in your future. You're working towards it. You don't know how you're going to get there, but you're going to try everything until it clicks. Until the universe decides, hey, I've already given you all the lessons you need. Let me give you what you want. All right, guys. Thank you guys so, so much for listening to this podcast. I hope it was super helpful for you. Um, I know that a lot of times I talk a lot about beliefs and I talk a lot about your mindset and how it is so integral to growing your business, to having the life that you want to live. Because coming from a person that, you know, you would see success written all over, I had to reprogram my entire brain in order for me to be happy. And happiness is success. Peace is success. Money, fame, those are just tools that I utilize in my tool belt in order to impact more people. And that, I think, is a wonderful way to look at it. Because then I'm not putting energy into those things and making it mean something when I don't achieve them. 
All right, guys, hope you guys have a wonderful day. Go ahead and follow me. Press the subscribe button here if you're watching it on YouTube or if you're on Spotify or listening to me on Apple. You guys, I love you so much. If you could comment and give me some five stars, I would love that. Screenshot this, post it on Instagram stories. I tag and love every single one of you guys whenever you guys do that. And if you send me a DM, if you guys want to learn more about this stuff, going a little bit more in depth, uh, let me know. Love you guys. I'll see you next time.